Welcome back, listeners, young and old, to the devilish, dark, and horrific Axel Fears Horror Hour, where we find the most gruesome stories plucked from the deepest, darkest corners of your mind. Don't worry, I'll be sure the narrator will be very careful with it. Now, let the terror commence! <laughs> My, this storm is building up tonight. It's just the opener we need. Greetings, everyone. I am the narrator. For tonight, we delve into a tale where trust in a committed relationship is put to the test. Please, sit back and relax as we tell the twisted tale of... The Birth of the Blood Moon. Listen while you can. <laughs> Act 1. The Manor in the Storm Encased in a shroud of endless night stood a forest of birch and pine, pelted down by a treacherous storm, and in these very woods rode a cyan Volkswagen Beetle that has seen better days. Lightly rusted from bumper to bumper, its license plate hanging on by one bolt and its headlight beams dancing between the huge droplets of rain. It pulls over at an ancient Georgian gate, its wipers working overtime with little to no effort at clearing the downpour. Inside the car were a couple in their mid to late thirties. Gerald, a mousy, anxious man in a sandstone brown suit, with thick round glasses on his small button-like nose. And his wife, Stephanie, a tired looking woman with curled brown hair held back with a yellow ascot and pointed framed glasses to illustrate her fatigue-driven eyes. She wore a light blue floral dress, two sizes larger than herself, for you see, she is eight months pregnant at this time with her belly full of life resting safely in her lap. The odd-looking couple took double glances at the large gate, then to the map in front of them on the dashboard. Honestly, Gerald, we are lost. No, no, Stephanie, we're not lost. We simply took a wrong turn. And please, don't overexert yourself. You know about... I know about that, Gerald. We have plenty of time before it happens. We just need a place to rest for tonight. Oh, this weather is getting atrocious, dear. Uh, we can't get to the cottage now. We we might end up stranded here. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I am not sleeping in this rugged rust pile of a car tonight. It's far too risky for me and the baby. Oh, I can't help it, Stephanie. It, it's not my fault that I... And will you stop scratching your neck? It's gonna get worse. Oh, uh, look over there. In the distance, is that a hotel? The couple looked up upon the glow of the full moon. In the far distance lay the silhouette of a large manor, its windows lit in candlelight. It sat at the very top of a steep, empty hill where one bare oak tree grimly stood nearby, and a long, narrow cobblestone road slithered down from the front door all the way down to the main gate before them. Gerald, that's probably some old ghastly tourist attraction. Besides, I don't think it's too busy. Look, even the lights are on. Surely whoever lives there will let us stay until the storm is gone, and with our little one on its way. Oh, all right, honey. Uh, honestly, I think the baby is getting restless, <laughs> probably from your side of the family. Gerald was hesitant at first, but with the oncoming monsoon of rain bucketing on the rust bucket of her car, just made him more anxious to even think. He started up the engine and drove all the way up the curvy road, getting more and more unnerved the closer they got to the manor. Approaching steadfastly to its entrance, bestowed upon them was a massive mahogany door engraved with lions, and on its frame was a brass doorbell its button inside a lion's mouth. Using the front porch as protection from the storm, Gerald's heart raced a little once he witnessed this intimidating door. 
<laughs> uh, on second thought, uh, I don't think this is a this is a good idea, dear. Uh, there could be other people occupied, and uh, we don't want to disturb them. Uh, maybe you're right. We should go back to the cottage, like I promised. Honestly, Gerald, it's too late for that now. We've been sitting in the car for hours, and I need proper shelter and a real bed. Do you want to tell our child how I gave birth to them, alone, in a beetle in the middle of nowhere? With barely enough elbow room. Besides, it's not like people haven't seen a baby's birth before. <coughs> That's not what I meant. Without wasting another second of time, Stephanie reached out and rang the doorbell. It rang anonymously throughout the entire manor, like it was on its last breaths of life from overuse or lack thereof. Gerald, however, was shaking at the knees in fear. Who could own such a prestigious house in the middle of nowhere? Then, before he had a chance to grab his wife and return to the car, thus risking the lecture of a lifetime, the massive mahogany door unlocked itself and creaked open. Act Two, The Host. The door's creaking hinges echoed through the hallway. Peering through the crack of the opening came a dimly illuminated candelabra made of silver. He also had almost skull-like features on his face with dark circles in his eyes and a chiseled chin lined with a defined beard and pointed brow, as if he hasn't slept in years. He looked menacing, yet welcoming at the same time, which brought a chill to Gerald's spine. This man was the host. Hello. May I help you, my fine people? Oh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, wrong place. A uh, mistake. Gerald, don't be rude. Uh... Stephanie. Oh, madam, you must be in so much discomfort. Please, come inside. There is a comfortable chair near the fireplace for you. Oh, Helena! Yes, sir? Please, take this woman inside. She needs all the help we can get. Grab some clean nightgowns and prepare everything. Right away, sir. I'll fetch the other maids and get the hot water ready. Very good, very good. Right this way, madam. You're in good hands now. Thank you, sir. You're so kind. My husband is being so unreasonable about coming here on such short notice. I don't blame him. And with good reason, Stephanie, dear. We made reservations for another establishment, and we don't want to intrude on their hospitality. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's all right, madam. Let's get you inside quickly and prepare for our new guest. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, n new guest? Well, it's quite obvious, sir. It, 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 it is? She's in labor. Oh, thank you. What? Oh, dear. You probably didn't notice her water break because of the rain. I understand completely why you're so nervous about all this. But... Don't worry, Sonny. I have plenty of staff members on hand who specialize in this kind of stuff. They all have first aid training. I would call an ambulance, but due to the storm our lines are dead, and unfortunately they will not be fixed until tomorrow morning. Oh, 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 my goodness. This, this is bad. She, she's not due for another week or two. But we cannot have your wife prolonging the birth of your child. Once this storm passes, we'll call them as soon as possible. Congratulations, my dear boy. You're going to be a father soon. Everything will be fine, young lad. <laughs> Come with me. I'll have my butler Jeremy get these luggages put away in your room, and I'll pour you a glass of my finest wine in celebration. You'll need it for what's going to happen next. <laughs> oh, that, that, that makes two of us, sir. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's the spirit. <laughs> this is a time for celebration. After the birth, we'll throw a glorious feast for your new family. 
Oh, uh, that, that, that won't be necessary. Not at all, not at all. It's the least we can do after you've both been stuck in that dreadful storm, especially in this predicament. Just one question, sir, if I may. Yes, what is it? Are, are you a dog person by any chance? <laughs> hmm. Yes, I don't mind a classic hound or two, as long as hair house trained. <laughs> Good lord, man. Are you planning on getting her a dog as well? You could say that specifically. Well, aren't you a splendid young man? Not only are you surprising your wife with a child, you're getting her a pet. What a lovely surprise. What are you planning on getting, and when do you think you're going to get her one? Much sooner than you think. <laughs> It'll be qu qu quite the surprise. Oh, is your... Is your neck doing okay, my good man? You seem to have reddened it with all of this scratching. Are you okay? Oh, uh, th this? Uh, it's, um, um allergies. Uh, probably my new cologne. Or, or my nerves. Uh, that's right, my nerves. That's quite all right. I may have something for that. Now, let's get everything ready, shall we? Act Three. The Secret. Stephanie and the maid Helena settled into their new room on the second floor. Her damp blue floral dress was draped over a silver railing in front of the fireplace to dry while Stephanie changed, panting labored breaths as she went. Despite the generosity of these established people bringing a smile to her face, she held back something dire. She was wary, not just about her baby, but the whereabouts of her husband. You'll be all right, ma'am. Just take some calming breaths with the clock now. Where is my husband? He'll be here once you're settled, dear. And don't you worry. I'll be here throughout the entire thing. No. He needs to be with me. Only him. Why? What on earth is the matter? Is there something you need to tell me, ma'am? Listen to me carefully. Under no circumstances is anyone else allowed in this room until the next morning. Understand? It is life or death. Once the baby is born, you take it away from me and not come back to this room until dawn. Understand? I, I understand, ma'am. But your husband? Should the police be involved? The phones aren't working and- No! No police. Don't let anyone see this. Just grab my baby and run out of that door and promise me you will take care of it. Promise me. Pardon? Promise me that! I, I promise, ma'am. Act 4. The Cries That Vary Oh, I'm so nervous. I hope everything's okay. Oh, please don't fret, my friend. You're doing wonderfully. Once the baby arrives, you can go up and see your new boy. <coughs> oh, congratulations, Gerald. I can't imagine. Gerald? Jeremy, where has he gone? Why, he ran upstairs, sir. In quite a panicked state, I might add. What? He was panicked? Yes, sir. He practically pushed me out of the way as if his life depended on it. He did? I don't understand. W what could possibly... N no! Get away from her! Ah! <coughs> What's going on? Helena! Helena! What's happening up there? Jeremy! You and the others stay downstairs. No, sir. Uh, wait. We must call someone. Gerald! Stephanie! Is everyone all right? The lightning clashed and the thunder boomed. 
The host walked farther into the room. It seemed empty. Their luggage was ransacked, the master bed torn apart and shredded, and the silver railing that once kept Stephanie's soaked garments was nowhere to be seen. In its place were scuff marks and smears of blood on the wooden floor leading towards the direction of the giant window where the silver railing now lay. Gerald was on the other side of the bed, droplets of blood on his cracked glasses with his newborn in his arms. Sir! Sir! What happened? Where is Helena? Speak to me! She's... She, she's behind you. Who, who is behind me? My wife. Gerald whimpered and pointed to the host's direction. Hey, look, look, darling. It's a lovely snack. Eat up, dear. A deep, animalistic growl rumbled from the shattered pane. The host turned in surprise and noticed. Laying amongst the jagged pieces of glass and the silver railing were the torn remains of Stephanie's blue floral dress. It seemed stained with blood. Movement catches the host's eye to reveal a monstrous mass hidden behind the maroon curtains. His body froze in place, for he could not believe what he was witnessing before him. The Beast of the Blood Moon. A werewolf! Howling winds echoed through the room and rain sprayed inside as the storm raged on. The host dropped to his knees in shock. The werewolf roared loudly and the host screamed in terror. In his panicked instinct, the host reached for the silver railing just inches away from his feet. But the beast managed to lunge at the man, grabbing him by the jugular with its beastly hand. The man struggled and without hesitation swung the railing with all his might and smacked the werewolf's right shoulder, causing it to howl in agony and drop the host to the floor hard. A burning singe sizzled on the beast's shoulder and it whimpered as it turned away, only to bare its teeth, undeterred, and leapt out of the shattered window with the claps of thunder and lightning, draining out its howls in the far distance. You fool! What have you done? Now my wife will be all alone in that horrible store. And what about my son? We can't have him without a mother. Well, say something! So when you said that I was a dog person, you meant this. I should have known. Please, sir. Uh, uh, you mustn't tell anyone about this. I love my wife so much, but she can't help herself. She can't remember what happened afterwards. Uh, I promise we'll leave first thing tomorrow. And I'll pay for the damages. No, this will not be necessary. What do you mean, man? Look at the damage we caused. Your poor maid, Helena. I'm so sorry for her. She is a dime a dozen, old boy. I can get another. What's gotten into you, man? We have to find my wife. Fine. I'll look for her. On one condition. Anything, sir. Anything at all. First things first. Place the child on the bed and face me. Oh, all right, it's done. Now, now, what do I have to do? Don't move. What are you talking about? Ah! You tasted splendid, my fine lad. I'm so sorry you couldn't stick around, but my, my, does your blood taste good? Anything I can do for you, sir? Yes, Jeremy. Take the body away and dispose of it. It is of no use to me anymore. Mm, why, yes, sir. And... What of the child? Ah, uh, yes, the child. Uh, come now, young man. We do not want your mother knowing you are still alive. Sir, you're not really going to... Jeremy, really. Honestly, I am not that cold. Now come along, son. We have a lot to teach you. <laughs> but of course. Sir... Has he been given a name? A name? 
Helsing. Vladimir van Helsing. Ah, yes. An excellent name. Count Dracula. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Now let this be a lesson to all out there. In any relationship, be it platonic or romantic, communication is key, and silver does not always go with everything. Father, I'm home! <laughs> That's my son Vladimir back from the village. Well, I best be off. I'll see you next time. Ha 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 ha